stop it by the old room, 227. The floor was empty today. Down memory lane a couple months ago. Pretty crazy. A few months of my life in here. Good afternoon. It is March 10th, 2019. Um, outside of my hotel room at present. The Marriott Town Place Suites, still. Um, which means I'm still looking for an apartment. Um, it's kind of nice out here, it's sunny. And the, uh, probably 50 degrees, pretty agreeable. Been a nice couple days here in Denver. It's uh, felt very spring-like the last few days, actually, as we've been outside doing a lot of stuff. Um, had a visit. Uh, from Alan Meyer, an old Polaris buddy. Um, it was good to see Alan. Um, Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday, he was here. We went over to Craig, and he got the grand tour. I didn't have any therapies on Friday because of a, uh, a death in the OT family there at Craig. One of the therapists' uh, husband died of a heart attack recently, so there was a lot of people out for the funeral on Friday, including Maggie. So no therapy for me, we lifted some weights, um, exercised the jaw, as I like to say, catching up with some people. Um, Rick and Sue, had a few friends in from Pinedale who knew a mutual friend of mine over in Pinedale, and um, I actually know a few people from Pinedale, which is totally ironic considering how small it is. Um, but now, yeah, no, I mean, I feel like I know half the town, so. Anyhow, uh, yeah, Alan and I did that Friday. Saturday, we went over to the gym, lift some weights. I rode the FES bike. And then uh, we went out to Cochino Taco and actually went and had a little dog walking adventure over at Cherry Creek State Park. So we went and picked up Bodie and Herbie and then somehow managed to get unloaded out of the car with dogs on leash and me into the wheelchair without losing the dogs and while they were still tight it was chaos absolute chaos because Herbie doesn't like to sit still so you have to hang on to his leash otherwise he'll bolt and Bodie doesn't know what's going on but you know, he'd want to wander away too and there's about a thousand dogs everywhere and the parking lot's full and there's traffic there was cars backed up outside the gate it was $13 to go and there was lots and lots and lots and lots of dogs. So um, um, here's a little picture uh, from the walking. It's just me sitting there. But anyways, uh, you kind of can get the gist of the landscape there because there's so many dogs, the grass is just trampled. It's a popular place in Denver, and a lot of people have dogs, apparently. Yeah, so super cold day yesterday, though. That was nice. But um, tired, again, as always. I'm just working hard, I feel like. Leaves me tired, and then uh, still a lot of healing going on in the body. I think for real. Um, been, uh, I'm sure kind of been dipping again, which has been a little bit, it was a little bit better, actually, after the Missoula trip. I was able to cut my blood pressure med in half. When I got to Missoula, for some reason, my, I just could tell that my I didn't need as much. My blood pressure was feeling like it was elevated, so I was able to cut that that amount again. So that that was good. And then I just, whatever reason, Wednesday and Thursday I was struggling with it, um, going low again after eating and whatever. But uh, yeah, some hypotension, and I'm just working through that a little bit today. And, I mean, this week. Um, yeah, the guys had a, had a good week, yeah, pretty standard for me, you know, it's like I said, I get there from at 11 and I go till 6, you know, me and dad have a pretty good routine, get up in the morning, you know, around 6, 6.30, um, take the pills, eat some food, drink some coffee, drink lots of water, get up, program, shower, get dressed, uh, usually have some eggs or 
an omelet for breakfast, and then around 10 o'clock we try to head for Craig. So I transfer into his car, and then we got like a 10 minute drive to Craig from here, which is, that's nice. And um, yeah, it's, that's, it's it. And I'm there all day and kind of eat my lunch. I can, dad packs the lunch for me. I can open up my backpack off my chair and I eat lunch with some friends down in the cafeteria. And then we I continue the afternoon and lift weights when I got spare time and go to the Peak Center. Um, yeah, uh, this week I rode the bus for the first time to Craig from here. The bus stop is literally right behind the building, but because of there's no sidewalk in between this parking lot and the, the bus parking lot, I have to go about a block around the roundabout way. So I go downhill, cross a block, and then I have to go uphill a block basically to get to the bus stop. So in my manual chair, I don't know if I can do that by myself, and if I did, I'd probably exhaust myself for the day and my shoulders would be wrecked so it was good dad took me over there and we got on the bus and or i got on the bus and rode it all the way to craig it was super quick and easy straight shot they dropped me off right in front of this the swedish hospital building next door where it's a little bit downhill and a little bit uphill to get in the front door swedish but it's doable as long as it's not snowy or crappy out so uh that was a good good little experience. You know, the bus is easy. It's got a ramp that folds out. The bus kneels, it's got a ramp that folds out. You from you know basically gets level with the sidewalk and I just roll up and wave my card at them and it's a buck fifty per rut. So and that's discounted for disabilities. So yeah, I can get pretty much anywhere. But that's a good thing and it would get me back and forth to Craig if I had to. Um my power chair got approved. I think I talked about that. So we're picking, finally getting delivery on that this Tuesday. So I'll have my power chair. And I can start going places in that. So, I mean, I could easily ride the bus back and forth to Craig that way. And not have to worry about wheeling around once I get there. Um, and then, yeah, a little bit more freedom too with the power chair. I can go and do the grocery shopping and we just gotta figure out how to do the transfer from one chair to the next, or from chair to bed to chair, and that kind of situation. So, um, health is good. Um, let's see, I went in, talked about intermittent catheter work trials uh, this week with the urology people as, as well as my PA right now. Um, so a clean intermittent catheter program basically is would do away with my suprapubic catheter and my indwelling and I would go to a urethral cathetering program where you kind of you cath yourself every two or so hours when you start having a lot of pee in your bladder and drain it and the catheters you are disposable you use them one time there's a bag attached to them usually and then you can just go into a bathroom and you pull down your pants, you cat yourself and go on about your day. Um, it's the best way probably possible to do it as far as cleanliness and safety and things like that, um, and risk of infection and cancer. But it's a hand function thing for me, being able to hold on to the tools and being able to get pants down and things like that. So interesting conversation it would lead to some independence which would be good but it also limits me in one way in that I'd have to wake up in the middle of the night um, to go to the bathroom basically you have to sit yourself up and, and do the cathetering catheterization I think is the proper term but that was a good conversation so anyhow it's encouraging I definitely they say that I'd, I'd be capable of it in a little bit more time so um yeah, that was my Wednesday. It was pretty busy, actually. Um, apartment hunting. Apartment hunting and more apartment hunting. ADA compliant does not mean roll-in shower. ADA compliant means they might lower a counter and then they've got a higher toilet and a bathtub with some handles in it. So 
um, one apartment complex, this is very common, we found that would be good. We asked if they would make modifications you know, to get a roll-in shower and take the carpet out of the bedroom so that I could get through it to the bathroom in my shower chair. And they said they would do it at our expense, but then it would have to be changed back at our expense. So apparently apartment complexes around here don't understand what Craig is and the additional market that they would be entering by having an accessible, fully accessible apartment with a roll-in shower. Um, like I said, there's been a dozen or so people that have come and gone since I've been here that have really had a hard time with housing. And it's, it's real. I'm, I'm, I'm there right now. I've been in my hotel room now about a month. I'm kind of getting to the end of my rope right now because I can't go outside by myself. I can't open the door to get out of the bed, out of the room, like I said. And the carpet. So I'm trying to give myself a little bit of a deadline here to say, all right, it's either by this day or time to go. So not what I want to do, but right now housing is difficult. So I went and looked at an apartment today had some promise it was a family a Craig family member type thing um, this lady that works in the research department she's a speech pathologist she has a son with the same injury as me uh, for the most part and uh, he's moved out of the apartment it's downtown pretty close to downtown very hip part of town um, city park area it's called uh, condo that they bought and modified the shower. It's got a nice rolling shower, and, uh, sink you can get underneath, and a toilet that's lowered. So it's great. It still has carpet in the bedroom, so but it comes with a sleep number bed. But it comes with a 23-year-old new roommate who is in a chair as well. He's a para, but he's 23. You know, it seems like a really nice guy. Um, I met him today. We checked it out. It's a great building. Carpet in the hallways, of course, because why not? Um, parking spots to be a little challenging, and then it's quite a ways away. It's probably 25 minutes during rush hour, and because um, it's not easy to get to from the Craig neighborhood, so my commuting would be difficult. And there's not room for family and members right now because of the because of the roommate situation. So I've. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm torn about it right now. It's really my best option, price-wise, accessibility-wise. But I don't know. I mean, my caregivers and the distance that they would have to travel to get to me, uh, my commute, uh, the fact that I can't have people there, or I mean, I, they'd have to sleep on a couch or the floor or something. You know, it's not good that way. Um, so I'm. Got to try and think it through a little bit here. I'm just a little tired today, so that's not really an easy an easy thing to do. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just part of the challenges. So yeah, I guess, you know, as I kind of put it in my head of like picking a day, that's as we talked about, my therapist and I talked about it, as she said, you just got to have to put in a date on it and give yourself an ultimatum and say, if you're not there by that date, Time to go. So, if we're not in a finding an apartment by then, it'll be time to go. So, that way I've got a light at the end of the tunnel a little bit. Um, yeah, that's enough about that. I think that's the woes. Um, positive side, you know, therapies are going super good. Strengthening, I'm getting a lot stronger in a lot of ways. Things I'm noticing, you know, just transfers and slides and slide board transfers um get myself in and out of this you get myself into the shower chair pretty much without assistance now but i still have a hard time getting out of the shower chair just because it's your butt's wet and you're stuck to it um yeah i don't know otherwise therapy goes well it does i mean i think every day that i'm developing some new skills and, and learning um Know, like connecting my my night bag to my leg bag you know for my catheter system at night when I'm in bed um, I'm able to pull my pants off now completely while I'm in bed 
um, worked on pulling socks off. I can get like a regular crew length socks off if they're not too tight, but I'm not able to remove my compression socks yet either. So um, that and my, my leg bag straps and stuff like that, I can't necessarily do. But um, it's just working on little pieces of the nighttime program. So you see if I can get that down by myself. Um, I got this super sweet blanket that I'm wearing right now. As you can see, it's a hand, hand sewn number with a nice fleece on the back. And it's on my lap right now because it's kind of chilly. And that was a huge thank you to a woman by the name of Nancy Fazio out there in Long Island. A fan on Long Island. I'm I am not sure if that is my furthest reaching fan. I may have an international fan out there. I'm not sure. Or a subscriber, maybe. I don't know who my subscribers are on YouTube, but I'm up to 187 as I looked the last time. So thanks for watching, everybody. Especially Nancy. Thank you so much. We've never met, but uh, she's the mother of a friend of mine in Missoula and has really been watching and been inspired. So, again, Cheers to you, that's huge. Um, the pillow is being put to good use too, but not right now, obviously. It's up on the couch in the, in the uh, studio right now. Um, and chocolate, yeah. I mean, chocolate covered blueberries, like, I don't know what else, what I've done and deserve this from you, but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, and again, hopefully, if anybody wants my address, it was in one of my tech, my my uh, videos a couple weeks ago, but maybe it was the beginning of the month. But yeah, definitely shoot me a text. I'll get you my address. Um, Bill and Carol, thanks for the letter. Um, it's been a little while since we've talked. I know. I know you're watching. I know that you're out there. I miss you guys too. Um, but yeah, we'll catch up soon. Uh, probably the most exciting thing that happened this week, though, was Friday night. I got to go scuba diving for the first time. So the therapeutic rec department does um, scuba diving, adaptive scuba diving. I don't know what, it's what adaptive is versus not adaptive. But uh, they basically, there's a scuba center in town. And uh, got there, and I got ahead. My nurse Mary was there that helped me get changed, which was really difficult because getting changed into shorts and out of pants and stuff in a wheelchair when there's not a bed around um, proposes an interesting challenge, a unique challenge that I'm not really capable of doing by myself without hand function. So um, got changed and that all was awesome because I got to get in the pool and they they have a sling that they drop you in the pool and they slipped on a wetsuit and they put on my air tank and buoyancy device and uh, yeah just drop me down to the bottom of the pool it's like a 10 foot or 12 foot little dive tank that they have indoors and you know, it was pretty neat you know the feel I've never done it before like that weightless feeling um, that's I think that was pretty pretty cool I was kind of down there and I would stand on my feet which felt interesting, right? It's been a while. And I'd kind of just play around with my breath and, and bouncing on my feet and can kind of take a deep breath in and I'd float a little bit and you know, then I would let it out and I'd get back on my feet or I could kind of paddle my hands up and down too and then it was pretending like I was jumping. But yeah, just, you know, I've got enough arm function and power now that I can swim pretty well with my arms and some little I think with some little paddles that would be really good so I gotta pick up some little paddles like those little swim paddles I think would be awesome if I go again and um, maybe there's some scholarship money available and I can get on get certified and they take Craig takes a group of people down to like the Cayman Islands and stuff every year or the Caribbean to do some scuba diving so basically you do it with a mentor or a, uh, there's always a person around you but anyways Here's some pictures and some videos of that from Friday night at A1 Dive Center here in Denver.
you guys get started and I'll oh, okay. start okay. filming. Super cool, yeah. Um, thanks to Alan for doing his best photography work there. But yeah, it was a small group of people, three of us, patients from Craig. I'm the only outpatient, or no, two outpatients, one inpatient, anyways. It was a great outing, um, very easy. Good good people, they were fun to be with. And then, um, get some five guys and headed her home Friday night. Um, Uncle Sarge is here right now, brother-in-law, Mike. Uh, he's here for the week just because he loves me. And my dad is headed back to the UP tomorrow. Um, Sarge got in today. Dad's going back to shovel snow off his roof because that's what you do when you live in the UP. You snow show off your roof, snow shovel snow off your roof and snow blow. So he's just kind of trying to keep on top of it, spend a little time with his... With his better half there, Sandy, her girlfriend, Sandy. And her kids are there, too, so they'll be hanging out. And it sounds like Sister Laura's going to go up there, from what it sounds like. So, um, Dad's good. Uh, he's been working a lot. He actually picked up some job jobs as a handyman around town. Putting tile, you know, tiles in a bathroom, painting a wall, you know, odds and ends that some random connection he made which has been really good uh, I think he really enjoys it I think it's good for him but it doesn't matter what I think so having a little money is a little probably also helpful for him too and makes the world go round but um yeah speaking of money they're trying to figure out how to reintegrate me into the community here at Craig not at Craig but in general here in the world I go to a community reintegration specialist every week now as they're trying to figure out how to convince Mike Manhart that he needs to go back to work again or to reintegrate me in the community. But I, I make a kind of a good joke about it because it's like it's hard to re You can't in reintegrate somebody who's never been integrated. So she's now my community integration specialist and that's her challenge is trying to make me fit in to a place I never fit in before. So... Uh, it's good though because we're working on right now is trying to get the Department of uh, Vocational Rehab to uh, help me modify a van and get the van modifications paid for through a grant so that I get back to work or can do something, you know, just having transportation that, to get to any job. Um, but it won't be that hard to get back to work. I've had a lot of contacts and I would have... There's projects I could pick up. Sorry about that, the phone rang. Apparently it cuts off the video. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, Voc Rehab. So, yes, Montana, apparently the Voc Rehab program, the funds have been frozen or limited or something like that. So maybe my best bet is going to be in Minnesota when I get back there. And then, uh, <coughs> got to have the van first and then they'll help me modify it. So working on that a little bit. Uh, Matt Keenan's working on that from the Larry H. Miller group. I'm looking for an interim solution because the DVR grants take three to four months probably, maybe more to go through. So it's, you know how that is. It's paperwork applications, approvals, match grants, money. You gotta prove that you did the work and it's long. It sounds extensive, so we're looking for something used, simple, cheap, in the meantime. I got a lead on a little van that we're going to check out tomorrow and see. Kind of a minivan type deal. I think that would work really good short term, and then just resell it when I'm ready to upgrade. Got my vocational rehab grant. I will, uh, then I just go get a new van. I'll, that's what I've been working on, like a Dodge Pro Master or a, or a Mercedes Sprinter. The Sprinter is the ideal case, but the price difference is $40,000 versus $60,000, so uh, it's a lot. So I've got to figure out how to come up with all that stuff, too. Um, 
yeah. So, um, I hope all's well out there in the world. Uh, drop me a line. Let me know how everybody's doing. If you, if I haven't heard from you in a while, um, Missoula friends, I have a very limited visit coming up here for my driver's test on the 22nd. Um, I fly in on Thursday night and I fly out Sunday morning early, so it'll be a very brief. I'm sorry if I don't get to see very many people. I'm there because I need to pass my driver's licensing test with hand controls in a van. So I've got to rent a van with hand controls, learn how to drive the van specifically and make sure I understand how that specific van works. I did it obviously before, but then I feel confident enough to take my test, pass it, and then they'll give me my medical restrictions on my license, making it legal for me to drive with hand controls. So. Um, which I don't know what they would do if they pulled me over if I didn't have my license. I obviously know how to drive with hand controls if I was driving. But apparently that's not legal, so you have to get approval and you can't just beg forgiveness in this this situation, so. Yeah. All right, well, anyways, if anybody knows about any great housing options in Denver or in the Denver area, I'd appreciate it. Um, we're looking at a few right now, trying to figure out what would be best. Uh, something will pop up I think it's kind of like I think it's kind of like dating you know it's when you kind of just give up kind of su submit and give up all together and just stop caring that that's when you find something so hopefully that works out this time with this apartment so all right I hope all is well uh, I hope everybody's staying warm and that winter comes to a conclusion here relatively soon and if not come to Denver and visit it's real nice here most of the time so we'll talk soon bye bye up Ooh. Ooh. harder Ooh. hold 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 good think about setting those shoulders down ready good yes Ooh, good Superman. <laughs> Super Mike. <laughs> That's what you look like. <laughs> I think Superman puts his hands out in front of him. <laughs> That's true. Okay. okay Up tall. Five, eight, eight. <laughs> you go down. Go down there.